Fly on the Wall TV. Actors Hugh Grant and Elizabeth Hurley met in 1987 on the set of Hurley's first major film, Romando Alviento, Rowing with the Wind. They became British Hollywood's power couple, and were praised by the media during their time together. Tabloids jumped at reporting on their budding romance. They filled media headlines throughout the late 80s and early 90s. Both notable actors of their time, cameras flashed when they hit the red carpets together. Both of their successes in film and modeling made them a dynamic duo. It was June 27, 1995, Hugh was 34 years old and in Los Angeles promoting his first big-budget American film, Nine Months, with Julianne Moore. He was taking Hollywood by storm, thanks to his 1994 smash hit, Four Weddings and a Funeral. Grant was living at the Beverly Hills Hotel and had, had scheduled interviews with the media throughout the day. Estella Marie Thompson, a.k.a. Divine Brown, grew up in Oakland, California. She was one of six children of a single mother. Twenty-five years old and now a parent herself, Divine was stressed out about not being able to pay a $133 electricity bill. Several months earlier, she worked as a prostitute and earned $1,000 in just five hours in San Francisco. So she felt she knew exactly where to go to quickly make the money she desperately needed. On Tuesday, June 27, 1995, she flew into the San Francisco Bay Area, following an argument with her then-children's father and manager, Gangsta Brown. He paid for a hotel room for her to service clients, in hopes of securing the money urgently needed to keep their lights on, as well as cover other past due bills. That night, Divine hit Sunset Boulevard, dripping in red, from her voluptuous lips to her long crimson nails, down to her blood-red stilettos. At the same time, Hugh Grant, was longing to scratch and itchy always wanted to satisfy. The sexy, debonair, and distinguished British actor was cruising for chocolate in a white BMW convertible, with a baseball cap pulled down over his face. The time? 1.15 a.m. Hugh spotted Divine and was captivated by her skimpy red outfit, sexy heels, and her full lips. Initially she thought Grant was an undercover police officer targeting her. He circled the block several times, she was scared and prepared to run. On his next go-round, he pulled up in front of her, but Divine did not move towards the vehicle. She wondered why he seemed to be interested in only her, when there were many other working girls on the strip. On his final time around the block he not only stopped, but flashed his lights in her direction, she built up enough courage to go over, I'm going to call the cops if you keep stalking me. I want you. He responded, you're so beautiful. What's a beautiful girl like you doing on the street? Years later, Divine recalls, he sounded a bit like Prince Charles but tried to cover up his accent. She went on to say, when I saw him up close, I could see he was a gorgeous guy. He kept talking about how pretty I was, and how he was struck by my lips and my feet. She was skeptical, you've got all these other women here. To which he replies, I am looking for a beautiful black woman. She looked around and all the other girls were white. He requested oral sex while in the driver's seat, no hotel room. Divine told him it would cost 50 bucks. Hugh gives her a boyish grin and says, please come with me. Divine got into the car and got to work. He confided in her that his fantasy was always to be with a black woman. As Divine slowly and delicately began to service him orally, he gazed down at her red lips, nails, toes, crop top, and sexy red lace panties, and gave her the name, Cherry Red. As she excited him more and more, he moaned, Cherry Red, oh shit, Cherry Red. He repeatedly exclaimed with pleasure. Twenty minutes in, enthralled with living out his fantasy, Hugh's eyes had rolled back, his hands clinched the steering wheel, and his foot pumped the brakes. Over and over, repeatedly. As he approached the tip-top of the cherry tree still groaning, Oh, Cherry Red, Cherry Red. Outside were two police officers. They were on routine patrol in the red light district of the Strip. Their attention had been drawn to the BMW because the brake lights kept flashing on and off, on and off, off and on. Soon there was a tap on the window Divine said, I looked up and then Hugh looked up and said, O.S. 
We both thought it was just some random person knocking on the window, until a police officer pointed the flashlight in our faces and said, please step out of the car. Both Brown and Grant were arrested and hauled off to jail, where those now infamous mugshots were taken. This all happened in perfect timing for the images to appear on every morning show in America and the United Kingdom. Divine shot to fame, while Hugh plunged into a public relations nightmare. They both pleaded no contest, were fined, and ordered to complete an AIDS education program. Grant was fined $1,180 and placed on two years summary probation. Divine flew back to Oakland the next day feeling down, knowing that she would have to hear Gangsta's mouth about paying for a hotel room she never used, getting locked up, and making no money. However, when she arrived at her apartment, the media was waiting to speak to her. That is when she realized that her handsome, polite, suave, and super sexy British client was Hugh Grant, a movie star. Right away she knew that she could spin the misfortunate event into a whole new lifestyle. Last night I did something completely insane, Grant said in a statement released to the press later that day. I have hurt people I love and embarrassed people I work with. For both things, I'm more sorry than I can ever possibly say. For Grant, the encounter in Hollywood's notorious Sunset Strip led to enormous personal humiliation. Two weeks later, at the premiere of the movie, Nine Months, Elizabeth Hurley's usual smile was nowhere to be found when the couple hit the red carpet together. Later that year she appeared on 2020 and said, I felt like I'd been shot. They were coming apart at the seams. Every media outlet wanted the salacious details, and Divine Brown was willing to tell it all, for the right price. Gangsta, was very much pleased, and while the iron was still hot Divine struck, by appearing on several talk shows, including Jerry Springer, Judge Judy, and The Howard Stern Show. Her appearances made her a millionaire. However, there was even bigger bucks to be made from the British tabloids who wanted dirt on their well-loved actor. The News of the World, a British tabloid newspaper said, We'll pay. They flew Divine and Gangsta to Palm Springs and pretended they wanted to write a positive story, and so it all began. published an exclusive with Divine and showcased her on the front page in a red Versace safety pin dress, identical to the black one that had been delivered to Liz Hurley. Soon Divine was doing semi-nude photo shoots for magazines like Penthouse and Centerfold. She did not give Hugh Grant's embarrassment a second thought. She was living her best life. After all, it was he who had stepped into her lifestyle, not her into his. In 1996, Divine starred in an X-rated docudrama with adult film star Ron Jeremy, entitled Sunset and Divine, The British Experience. Gangsta is recalled saying, The money poured in, poured in, and poured in. She had interviews, commercials, lingerie, lipstick, and several other things. We worked the Betty Boop commercial, we bought a new house, new cars, Rolls Royce, everything you could think of. It is believed that Estella Marie Thompson, Divine Brown, made $1.6 million from the Hugh Grant incident. She eventually dumped Gangsta and proudly sent her two daughters to private schools. In a 2010 interview with the Daily Mail, Divine said, The other night I was thinking, I wonder if he thinks about that night. I know he loved it, by the way he kept calling me Cherry Red. She is now 51 years old, Hugh Grant is 60, and though some of the money was spent on a lavish lifestyle, enough was wisely invested in properties, which allowed her two older daughters, Cheyenne 32 and Brianna 31, to go to college, she also now has a 14-year-old daughter as well. Divine left Los Angeles, California and moved to Atlanta, Georgia in 2005 in search of a quieter and more respectable existence. She claims that she is still eating off that one night with Hugh Grant. She occasionally wonders what life would have been like had she ended up with his love child. Chuckling, she said, those should have been my mansions. I had him first. Yes, I can imagine that lifestyle, yes sir. If we had gotten together, I bet that he wouldn't have been cheating and wouldn't have had different babies everywhere, because I would have fulfilled all his fantasies, I would have done it all. In fact, Divine, who recently split with her fiancé Richie, would love a second go at satisfying Grant. 
She laughed, of course I still like him, Hugh Grant is a fine-looking white boy. Even all these years later he looks really good for his age. I would love to see him again, I can be his next baby mama. Half of the world would probably love to watch these two in the same room, for an interview. However, whether their paths cross again or not, Divine sends her best wishes to the man who changed her life forever.